there ghouls and gals and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, hi my name is Hillary and if you're not new here, well, welcome back. Tonight we are going to be covering, we're jumping on that Tiger King flow, you know what I mean? Carol Baskin, did she murder her husband? Didn't she? We're gonna get into it. So before we start, I just want to say that I don't have any evidence, the police don't have any evidence, and Joe Exotic does not have any evidence, so I'm just gonna go and use the word alleged, just in case. So this is my, uh, this is my little safety net here. Um, I hope you guys liked the new intro. I promised you it was coming and it's here. So I'm gonna start off with the timeline and then you guys can draw your own conclusions into whether you think she's guilty or not guilty. So let's get into it. In 1981, Carol met her husband, Don Lewis, while they were both still married to other people. And as Carol recounts the story, as she said in the Netflix documentary, Lewis, who is 22 years her senior, met her at the side of the road. He pulled his car over. He then rolled down his window and offered her a ride because he thought that she looked like she needed a ride. She declined him and then he just drove off. He then returned a few minutes later with a revolver in the passenger seat and said, if you come in, you can hold this gun on me. He just needed somebody to talk to. And for me, that's a little bit weird, like still not getting in, but she did get in and did hold the gun on him and went for a ride. Now, a decade later from that strange meeting in the car in 1991, Lewis and Carol Baskin are now married. And at this point, they start to buy big cats. They start to buy these animals for their animal sanctuary that was called Wildlife on Easy Street. After buying all their cats and other such things, about six years later in June of 1997, um, Carol's husband, Lewis, filed a restraining order against her. He alleged that Carol threatened to kill him if he didn't leave their house. But at that time, it was basically chalked up to I can say what I want, freedom of speech. It's alleged that they were fighting over their different views on breeding the large cats. So Baskin no longer supported the way that Lewis was breeding them at the time. She said that their fights were mostly about money and the fact that her husband was promiscuous. So I guess they're fighting over the breeding of cats, the dollar bill, and the cheaty cheaty. On August 18th, 1997, two months later after all these threats were made, that's when Lewis disappeared. Carol said that her husband left before her that morning and said that he was on his way to Miami so that he could, I guess, fly down to Costa Rica. August 19th to the 20th of August, 1997, which is like two days later, that's when Carol officially reported that her husband had gone missing. So a little bit after that, the police actually found Luz's car at an airport, but there was no evidence to suggest that anybody had seen him that day, seen him park his vehicle or seen him get on an aircraft. Lewis could fly planes, so there was a theory that he kind of just hopped onto a plane and illegally flew to Costa Rica because he owned, I guess, a 200 acre park there. And that's where they thought that he was headed. Now the police uh, flew down to Costa Rica to see if they could find him, but there was no new leads. He was not at this park and no one had seen him. So that was a dead end. Now Carol was never like formally said that she was a suspect at the time, but the investigators who were d doing the case at this time said that we cannot eliminate anybody as a suspect. So we don't know. In 1998, there were still no clues as to where her husband could be and the whole investigation was kind of at a standstill. So the police asked if Carol could take a polygraph to which she declined to take a polygraph on the advice of her attorney. So we never got that polygraph test to see if she was lying. She also didn't permit anybody to go through her wildlife sanctuary or check the meat freezers or the meat grinder for DNA. She says, I would rather be helpful, but I'm sorry, my attorneys, they're saying I shouldn't do that. But for me, if someone caught my husband and my husband was assumed dead, like check the freezers. I, 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 would, I would be giving them everything that they needed to solve this murder. And I feel like she was kind of, or sorry, alleged murder. 
alleged, but she didn't. Later that year, Lewis's children from a previous marriage alleged that Carol murdered their father. And their theory was that she killed him, minced him up and fed him to the tigers, to which Carol said, my tigers don't eat human meat. There would be bones and all sorts of evidence all over the place, so that's, that's crazy. And at this time, Carol was also in a legal battle with his children, fighting over the, his $5 million estate, which is also a little weird because, you know, if I'm married and my husband has kids, like, split it equally. Why are you fighting? Why are you trying to get all this money when, like, lady, you don't need all that. In 2002, five years after Lewis went missing, he was declared deceased. And in this, like the Netflix documentary, they basically said that she had full control of his will at this point because he was declared deceased. She controlled all his money, all of his assets. It all went to Carol. And she wasn't really going to share a lot of that with his children. The same year, uh, Baskin met her third husband, Howard, and I believe they married in 2004, two years after this. And if you check those like, photos, they're a little weird. Like, uh, he's dressed up as a cat. She has him on a leash, mm, kind of weird. In 2011, around the last significant thing in the case happened, which was when the police again asked Carol if she would take a polygraph test to which she refused for a second time. So now currently 2020 after the release of Tiger King, Carol is basically saying that's everything's lies. I didn't kill my husband. I don't know. I don't know nothing. Which I heard that the police were reopening the case, but I'm not sure if that's factual. It's just something I heard. So they may be reopening this due to the documentary. Also, a few weeks before uh, Don Lewis's disappearance, it said that he was going to be headed to his lawyers to get a divorce from Carol. And it said that maybe she kind of knew about that. So that's a little, that's a little sketch. So I'm just going to read the police report that Don Lewis filed against Carol. And if you guys want to Google it, you can just Google. Don Lewis, police report, Carol Baskin. You'll probably see it yourself, but I'm just gonna read it for you now off my phone. Um, he said, this is the second time Carol has gotten angry enough to threaten to kill me. I was away from our house and she gave two junk men permission to come on our property and remove trucks, equipment that I had stored there. That man owned me, owed me $17,000. When I found out the man had owned the equipment, had to call sheriff to make them stop. When I got back, me and Carol got in a big fuss. She ordered me out of the house or she would kill me. If I came back, she would kill me. She has an H5 revolver and she took my 357 and hit it. I have owned the home and land for 17 years. We have only lived there for three years. I have a lot of equipment and animals there. Now, in my opinion, People don't just disappear. Like, you don't just vanish one day. Unless he was going to Costa Rica because he wanted to just break it off with her and he decided to fly down there and start a new family. That's the only way that I could think that someone would disappear, but leave all your money, leave your, like, you're going down there illegally. You're leaving everything, everything that you own with this woman and it kind of seemed like he was taking steps to get away from her. So I don't see why he would have just abandoned his truck, abandoned his $5 million estate with all of his money, not tell his children and just fly on down to Costa Rica and start a new life. Now, that's not saying that people wouldn't do that because I'm sure there are people that just go start new lives, but it seems a little weird. However, this is to shine a little light on Carol's side. Their septic tank was not put in the ground until way after the disappearance. So he's probably not in the septic tank. And the meat grinder was actually removed from the property, I think about seven weeks before he went missing. So he's probably not ground up. 
Now, does this mean that Carol hasn't done bad things in her life? Absolutely not. Like, I mean, you're getting in an argument with the guy's kids. You're not giving them any of his estate. You're kind of just taking all of it. So that's weird in that sense. But at the same time, does that mean you killed a person? No, it doesn't. So with this case, he is still considered a missing person, although they're currently still looking for evidence to see if they can find where he could possibly be. But we just hopefully we'll find out at some point. But right now we just don't know what happened to him. And all we can do is, you know, give our best wishes to the family of this man and hope that they find some sort of evidence of where he could have gone. So I just want to thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you liked this episode. I hope you come back for the next episode. Also, I hope, I hope, I hope you liked the new opening. But feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Anyway, thanks guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.